Well, play of the game. Well, yes. I mean, that's Overwatch. But it's not available on Linux. But I'm playing on Linux anyway. I'll run what I want, where I want, when I want. <laughs> if you're just joining us, I'm Wendell. And this is level one. We need to have an earnest and frank discussion about gaming on Linux. And this is part two of that conversation. Before we get to the nuts and bolts of how, let's talk about part one. If you missed part one, it's linked in the description below. Part one is all about gaming on Linux, mainly with Steam and good old games. Those things make it super easy to game on Linux. Honestly, it's better than it's ever been, but we still got a ways to go. And over the last couple of years, we've seen the entire graphics subsystem reworked on Linux to be faster and more efficient, uh, really just closer to the raw hardware. And we're still not at performance parity with Windows. I mean, the experience for games natively on Linux is, is pretty good at this point though. Still some rough edges, but pretty good. And that's all covered in part one. But it's talking about mainly Steam, good old games. Now this is our test system for gaming on Linux. It's an AMD Ryzen 2700X, and this is on the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon AC. It's in a lovely NZXT S340 case, and it has a Seasonic power supply. The GPU is a Sapphire Vega 64. So we're running 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z memory, and we're running an Optane 900P for storage. That's a 240 gig or 280 gig. This is gonna be Ubuntu 18.04 for this demonstration. And as a disclaimer, I'm not sure that gaming on Linux is a better experience. It's mostly not faster yet, but Linux offers a lot of promise and flexibility, even if it's not really easier. But I still think this is a worthwhile adventure. So what did you just see there with Overwatch? That's a Blizzard title. Blizzard doesn't support Linux. You can't install it from Steam. Let me explain. Some of the most played games over the last couple of years include Overwatch and Fortnite and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. Far Cry 5 is shaping up to be a big release of 2018, and it looks like Monster Hunter World, which was just released, is gonna be another big release title for 2018. But none of those have Linux support. So we're stuck, right? No. When the going gets tough, the tough turn programmer. And you can ride their coattails. So for Overwatch, uh, why are we gonna let a little thing like no Linux support stop us from playing? Well, it's running in Linux and I'm using Wine and DXVK with Lutris in order to be able to play Overwatch on Linux for this video. Wine and DXVK are programs that, uh, you know, from different development teams, they're programs from different developers, and they provide a sort of Windows wrapper for Linux. Uh, Wine provides a wrapper for Windows and DXVK provides DirectX to Vulkan translation on the graphics side of things. Now Wine is open source, but there is a group of programmers that make up about two thirds of the code commits on Wine, and their company is called Code Weavers. You should definitely check them out. The Code Weavers uh, website, you know, it's a pretty good sized team. They put a lot of work into Wine. So if you use Wine or you find this guy handy, please consider giving them money or buying crossover, donating to their project or something. Now it turns out programmers like to eat too. So if you try this, please, please, please consider giving them some support because hey, a little bit of money goes a long way when you're a developer. Oh, and one and crossover also lets you run Microsoft Office and other, other stuff other than games. Now, DXVK is much newer and it's a separate project and it's about translating DirectX 10 and 11 calls to Vulkan. DirectX is a proprietary API for gaming on Windows while Vulkan is a truly cross-platform and speedy open graphics API. Now, I tried to find where we could support the DXVK folks, buy them some coffee or beer or something, but they don't accept donations. So, this is truly a labor of love. If you don't think of DXVK as a hobby, you know, uh, think of it as a job, would be my message to the developers. And if you wanna make the transition from job to like hobby to career, let me know, contact me, I'll, you know. Wine and DXVK have loads of configuration options that can vary from game to game. It can be a lot of work to figure out exactly what combination of settings lets a game run, like Overwatch. Well, enter Lutris. Lutris is a website and a game launcher that will let you see you know, what combinations of settings have worked for other users of a particular game, so you can spend less time fiddling with those settings and getting it up and running. So for instance, while Overwatch is basically point and click once you're set up with, with Wine and Lutris, 
and DXVK, you just go to the Lutris website and run the installer script and it configures everything for you with the latest version of Wine that you need and on all of the options. But when you go to play Overwatch, depending on your particular hardware setup, when you are actually in the game, the uh, look screen, like the mouse look, may jump immediately to the top or it may be spinning all the way around to the side. It's just, there's some weird bug where your screen resolution needs to be 16 by nine or 16 by 10. So if you play with the screen resolution or you hit alt enter to go back and forth between you know a full screen mode and a windowed mode, it'll, it'll help you you know, sort of work around that issue. There's gonna be lots of little weird quirks like that with gaming on Linux. So like I say, it's not for everybody, but it is an adventure and it is worthwhile. So with these two packages, Linux becomes sort of a wolf in sheep's clothing, in other words. The games don't know that they're not running on Windows, but Windows really isn't there. So it's not really accurate to call that an emulator either. It's more like the game programming interface as it relates to Windows is sort of recreated in Linux. And so, like there might be something lost in translation hearing La Boheme in your native language, there's probably something lost in translation going from Windows to Wine. Wine and, and, you know, sort of this Wine DXVK game sandwich it might not work right. Games might crash, they might behave weird. For example, I ran the 2016 version of Doom for years, but then suddenly just one day it broke. And after a lot of digging, I figured out the reason it broke is because there was an update to Doom which added Razer Chroma RGB support, RGB lighting effects from Doom, basically. And that's been fixed where someone in the community like figured out how to patch that Chroma DLL, but it took forever. So a game that works today might not work fine tomorrow after an update, and then you have to spend a crazy amount of time figuring it out, or somebody does, somebody's coattails that you have to ride on. Copy protection, game copy protection, is one of the big ones that, that doesn't work a lot of the time. So something is definitely lost in translation for copy protection. For example, Far Cry 5, great game, works perfectly under Wine and DXVK, but its copy protection doesn't. So there's a pirated version of Far Cry 5 that's available on the internet without its Genuvo DRM, and that's the only version that's really playable under Linux at this time. So if you want to game and try to get it under Linux on Far Cry 5, you're out of luck, at least if you buy the retail version. Now I mentioned Fortnite. Fortnite is crazy popular and it is playable under Linux, but it has two forms of anti-cheat and only one of them works on Linux. So you gotta jump through some hoops and really, those hoops are much longer than I can get into in this video, but Fortnite on Linux does work. Now what about Monster Hunter World? That just came out. Well, I'm happy to report that Monster Hunter World also works, at least for the moment, under Wine with DXVK and Lutris. I mean, honestly, if I were Gabe Noel, I'd be like, oh, let's just give these guys bathtubs of cash or whatever they need. Always check the Lutris website for current statuses and updates because I'm telling you this, but I might be out of date. You should check the Lutris website. Now there are those in the community that say that you shouldn't support companies that don't don't make a Linux native version. And there's no room in their world for a transitionary period from moving from one platform to another. Don't listen to them. We are in a transitionary period. It's fine. There are other still more toxic elements of the Linux community that want to act as knowledge gatekeepers. Those guys act like installing Arch Linux is some sort of great personal accomplishment. And I sort of see it like, congratulations, you got your operating system's merit badge. Those folks are toxic, and they are the reason that we don't have things like a Witcher 3 port to Linux. Now, Witcher 3 will run anyway under Wine and DXVK, and it runs pretty well. It's a recent development. Um, and we showed that on our collaboration with the Linus Tech Tips channel. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, and you should really you should check that out. Level 1 is hopefully the next generation, more mature version of that community, or people who, among other things, are excited about the promise of a free and open source future. I mean, for me, computing is about an extension of myself. I can offload stuff going on in my brain onto a task on a computer that the computer can do. And I find Linux is particularly well suited for doing those kinds of things. So I'll compute the way that I want to with the tools that are available to me, be that Wine and DXVK, or if I want to run a full fat Windows virtual machine, well, I can do that too. That's what our next video is about, in fact. I don't have to use Windows much and as awesome as Wine and DXVK are, I really don't want to fiddle with the settings and stuff that might break, like my Doom 2016 incident. Instead, I might run something that just works. And for me, that's a virtual machine, a full Windows virtual machine. It's the closest thing to just working 
as I've ever experienced. It's got some rough edges too, and all the license fees and stuff like that goes with it and all the general Windows terribleness, but I can just boot it up under Linux whenever I need it and shut it down when I don't. I can run games with no fiddling, but to do that, you're gonna need two graphics cards and a fast modern machine, so it's not for everybody. You're also gonna have to wait until our next video to hear more about that, or go back to some of our older videos where we've covered that in the past, but hey, it's, it's developing rapidly and there's a lot of new information that's gonna be in part three and four of this series. But if all this is exciting and you're willing to jump through some hoops and deal with some reduced performance, then welcome. Let's add gaming with Wine and DXVK to your skill set beyond just native gaming with Steam, which we showed you before in part one of this video. We're glad to have your noob self here, in other words. It is a grand adventure, and for the new folks, as you read and you dig into information from the larger Linux community at large, you're probably gonna see a lot of the kind of people that are, well, embarrassing. Some of those toxic people I was talking about before. Lots of posts that read like they were written by your mad at the world, angsty, emo, teenager cousin. And let's face it, he gets around on the internet, let me tell you. When you see that, please remember, the open source community is still maturing and it doesn't belong to those gatekeepers that uh, want it their way or no way. If you see bad behavior and that kind of toxicity, please call it out for what it is. Your next step in this process is to go through the full guide for setting up or getting set up with DXVK and Lutris and Wine on Ubuntu. It's a continuation of our tutorial for part one and it's on the level one forums. It's all linked to in the description. Now it's gonna take some fiddling, but you're gonna be able to play games like Fortnite and Overwatch under Linux. Most games run at about 70 to 90% performance with Windows speed, and that's always improving. If you run into problems, come hang out with the level one community, and we'll try to get you sorted with a minimum of toxicity. Happy computing, I'm Wendell, over and out. When do the S and C sound the same when they're necessary? Like this video. <laughs> ah, see you in the comments.